Welcome back to The Existential Way. I am your existential life coach, Kevin Meredith, and today we're talking about the epidemic that has infiltrated the spiritual nature of your communities. Now, as a, as a chosen TI, this is something that is not only worldwide, but it really begins with the community that you may not have necessarily invited, but in another sense, it has invited itself around you. And, and so I'm going to talk a little bit today about um, the tales of a TI, you know, being my experience. Um, gosh, there's been so many times where they've thrown hints out in my past that they followed me around and it really did take the time of the awakening you know my awakening my major foundational awakening was in the end in December of 2013 um, and maybe even the beginning of 2014 and I, like I said this is the time when my website dropped and so um, December of this year will be not only the third year of my targeting, exactly, but it will also be the third year of the existentialway.com personal outreach. So from, from the beginning until now, a lot has happened in my life. Um, a lot has changed. Um, but I guess, you know, from what from what doesn't kill you, I guess you're made stronger. And so this is kind of my existing testimony up to this point. And I'm just going to, you know, talk about this, this pandemic that's worldwide. And it's just infiltrated our communities. And, and we have found ourselves as chosen TIs surrounded by this uh, spiritual corruption of humanity. And how it really is manifesting into a uh, material corruption of society and a gathering of wealth which has left all but few of the last remaining humans uh, to undergo this, um, I guess what we'd say is a speeding up or fast forwarding um, of the end times. You know, this is a very shortened time period where our frame of reference as Chosen TIs has also changed a lot. We've really moved from this hope and dream idealism of, of, of the American dream, and we really moved to the everyday reality of that's forced us into not only an existence of, of survival, but also an existence of growth and thriving. So at the same time, there's this kind of binary effect that's happening where not only are we attempting to survive more, but we're also with that being accompanied by this thriving to develop, spiritually develop and, and be moved up, be, you know, um, kind of uploaded into a higher frequency. And as of the past, like two and a half, three weeks for myself, it's just another, another awakening has, has somewhat occurred in my, you know, I guess you could say the pineal gland. I've really been focusing on, on chasing a diet and pursuing a diet in my life that has ever so closely moved the, the energy frequency of my pineal gland upward. And it's, a, it's an amazing feeling and it's an amazing um, endurance to be elevated in a way where you can see almost all things in your surrounding environment. Now, I think the job that you're going to find out with these gang stalkers is that their whole objective is, is to throw an obstacle and sidetrack you with the things that you see to keep you from that inward state of excelling in the spirit. Um, this is what this epidemic or this, you know, spirit, you know, spiritless driven apostasy is doing in terms of it creeping up into our communities and seeing reality for what it is in this dimension. And it's so, it's so sad to see this, but it's also so amazing that 
God would preserve such a small elect to see this happen in, in, in a time where it's almost as if those who are in apostasy will say that the scriptures themselves, they were for a historical, they came about in a historical time of humanity, which they did. But the scriptures themselves, you know, have really come to life to those who have had this hope of being a part of the last generation. And yes, we may have many more generations to come, but it's almost like you can understand that the scriptures themselves are historical if you're not a believer, but they're very much alive and they, they're directly a portion to your existence um, if you find yourself in the scriptures and, and they're, they're not only coming to life before your eyes, but um, you're being rejuvenated to thrive in the survival sense of what God's protection is all about. And so, yes, we do see things that um, implicates the crowd around us and it implicates the established ideal that goes on around us. But that's also our protection. God has given us his protection. He's, he's also laid out that the promises are for us who have eyes to see and ears to hear at a certain time. So it's not just historical, but it's historical historicity that has become present, has been made alive to those in the presence and with the eternal witness of the presence. And it's different. You're not just, they're not just speaking to you but they're being weighed heavily into your existence. They're being brought alive and, and, and giving life to you. And this is kind of that, you know, the tale of, of, of a life of a targeted individual is not only how closely do you identify with things that are given life, but, but how things that are given life um, directly directly relate to the cycle in in and protecting you and rejuvenating and bringing you a, a, a rejoice that is above and beyond even the simplest of understandings. Like, you could call it simple, but it's only complex when you're really, you know, struggling and suffering. Does that simplicity come to life in all its facets? You know? And, and this is... There's a difference between a per, uh, someone who's personal and someone who's professional like I said we've talked about this but it's when it's personal you don't need to prove it to anybody you don't need to be a teacher because your existence alone will be the activation of the life force within each cell of who you are so there is no definition written down on a piece of paper you become that living definition of it you know and everything is, you're, you're so presently aware of everything that um, it's like we're getting ready, we're being prepared for taking over this dimension. We're being, we have to go through these tests, they have to be run on us. And I don't know, yeah, and like I've said, I believe they're not just spiritual, they're not just technological, but they're both working in, in collusion and either against you to get you to progress you in the state that you have, that God knows he needs you to be. And he'll ready, he's going to ready you for this, even if you don't know, you know. We're going through so much as chosen TIs right now that it's almost like a day-to-day, -day, um, not only a day-to-day -day rejuvenation, but a day-to-day -day, uh, personal growth process that, that can only be existed in, can only be dwelt in. And then um, from there, you can only elucidate to the things or allude to the things that... Um, you've witnessed about the life that has been spoken, you know, to and through you. It's an amazing understanding to be here in this day and age and be in the heart to like, in a sense, to be on the front lines of the things that are available to the pure heart. I can't explain the world for what it is to me, I can only explain 
what the world isn't to me. You know? Um, God has not only protected his own from a survival standpoint, but he's expounded his kingdom in a thriving stand, you know, from a thriving, thrival standpoint from his state of existence. And he has used, you know, the rocks have cried out. Even they have been given life now. You know, we are not, we are not empty vessels anymore. After, after the awakening or our born again, uh, spiritual crisis that provoked us to take a rational examination of the eternal spirit's perspective upon our lives, it is that occasion which has appointed us to a divine relation with our creator, a divine relationship with our creator. I can't even explain it. It's like I want to explain it so badly, but then again there's almost nothing to explain anymore about living out the tale of, of being a chosen, targeted individual at this point. There's nothing to explain. You guys who are in the heart of the matter, you guys who are on the front lines, we can't explain it. We're just in it now. We're, we're so far deep into this. Um, something's happening where, where we're being prepared to totally vex the matrix and continue what ha the eternal stream of existence in and through this dimension, it's going to be, it's going to be a defined dimension, but not not based on man's traditions, not based on this draconian system. It's going to be defined in terms of the spirit, and if people can't access this understanding to the point of the spirit, they're already left behind. Nothing needs to be proved to them. They're already they're already gone. They've been scalped. Their souls have been removed. They, they, they don't get it. They never have, never were, never will. You know, the, the, the living de definitions that we are, are holding this dimension accountable by are even, we don't even have to define them to ourselves. We are existing now, we are now existing as the definition of the eternal um, conquering and love. And that's what the, our whole premise for, for being alive is, is to to exist as eternal witnesses now. We are the uh, living examples of what it is to, to be conquering in love, to be conquering in that high vibrational state that it has no limits. It only has a guarantee of eternal life to that which is in us. Things of the Holy Spirit, things of the eternal, uh, things of God's eternal witness, things of our eternal salvation, um, we are no longer held captive by our very own natures. We are not captivated and held in bondage by the things of the flesh. Yet we have to suffer because we are still in the flesh, as Paul says, you know. Yes, we want to excel and go on, but we came here for a mission. We came here to change the world. And if it, if it means being an isolated individual, or if it means you have to tarry by reaching out to that one lost soul at a time, that's the effort and the and the glorification of who God is, you know, and working through you and me, one person at a time, to get through to say that those one or two individuals, one at a time, so be it. That's the, you know, the glory be the struggle, right? The, we, you know, that's it. The glory be the struggle, or the struggle be the glory, you know? That's it. It's 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 a reward that is eternal. It's not awaiting greener pastures, you know. In the spirit, we'll understand what it what it means that you know for those things that have been awaiting us, because we'll be completed and we'll become eternal spirit at a point in time, you know. And I can't even explain it beyond that right now. Um, the reward is to, is to be able to transfer the rejoicing energy that God has has you know given us to give back to him has given us to to work through us to change lives and then ultimately the fruition of the spirit will be our capacity to give it right give everything that he's given us right back to him isn't that a reward enough in itself at least in terms of 
existing where the, the spirit is so huge in our lives and the egos are so diminished um, and we're able to do that because we're still in the flesh and that's the capacity of being rewarded at this time, you know, of our existence. And next, when we move on to, you know, becoming fulfilled spirit, we'll have an even truer understanding of, of constant eternal worship of our Creator. It's amazing. You know, so right now we can only function to a certain capacity, uh, uh, a less than fulfilling capacity, yet a struggle that has is so rejoiceful um, in the duality of our existence now, yet we, we, we won't even remember how rejoiceful this struggle, you know, has been when we move to that even more perfect perfection of, of, of being in spirit, you know, and being true to his witness and, and worshiping him constantly. Because frankly, I'm to the point where, um, the world's, it's a very ugly place. It's, there's, it, it doesn't offer, it doesn't promote the things that I exist for anymore. It never has. So, until I reach that state of constant worship of my Lord and Savior, um, it's gonna, there's going to be very much toiling in the flesh to get there and pursue that for my own true, you know, for, my, for myself, you know, for my thriving of, of, of the suffering that's going on. And I know a lot of you chosen TIs, you know what I'm talking about. We've been going through it for some time now, you know. And... We're only finally coming to the realization that we must shed the things of old away from us. But we're also getting the glimpses of um, perfection into a, into a more perfect pursuit of who the person of Christ is. And, and, and in terms of following that blueprint, you know, there is a, there's a blueprint, but it's also very personal and very specific to you and your walk, you know. The path has been the narrow. The narrow path has been given to to so few people. To so few people have the narrow has the narrow path come along, and has it been so um, definitive for this generation? Uh, a very and it's what what it is is these very few people, these very few few chosen TIs. It has been a a, a glaring example of an open door. But we're now finally grasping it. We're now finally taking hold of it. We're taking hold of what we were always born for, what we were created for. Like the Lord says, we were created for so much more. And that so much more is like a door's opening, but the light is almost so bright. It's giving us a glimpse of what will be and what will remain eternally. And I can't even... I don't want to define that for the world. The world, it wouldn't understand it anyways, you know. Like Christ says, he teaches these parables to the world because if they would have eyes to see and ears to hear, um, yet they don't perceive it, um, he teaches us, his chosen TIs, these things of his eternal mystery, this eternal stream, and it's, it's not for them. That's why it was taught to them in a certain way, but the things that he taught in a certain way for them were meant for us to receive in a whole way, in the most utmost truthful way, for a specific group, for a specific small yield of his perfected genetic crop, of his perfected genetic spiritual uh, transferring of understanding for a very select few. And it's amazing to be a part of that witness. If people would only know how amazing this witness is in these times, that this is for us and we should not, you know, you know, we should not turn it away as chosen TIs. But I can't, it just can't be handed to you on a silver platter to try to make sense of. Um, if you're still trying to attempt things in that, in this way, um, we still have work to do. And I myself am there too, you know, I still have work to do. Um, but I take each battle as a, as a hard-fought lesson to learn from and to receive um, what little reward comes out of these hard-fought battles, you know? This is, this is a battle for the soul of humanity. 
and it's an uphill battle. There's many battles will be lost, or what may be perceived as lost, will ultimately become a war that is won by our Lord and for our Lord. But He'll be using us on His behalf in this dimension, in this uh, historical moment in time that has been given a glimpse of, of, of life and has been used for, you know, his purpose. So I, I give with him only so, you know, with so much gratitude the offer and, and ha having been part of the opportunity for, you know, my Lord to use me as he wills for my life, you know, for his glory and his gain of his kingdom, you know. So where you think you might not be doing enough or your part is so small, in the Lord's eyes, you're playing the biggest part because you're already halfway there or further just by knowing who you are in the Lord's service. Where the world, it can't understand these things. It's not, it doesn't come from, it doesn't come from, nor will it ever go to the things of his nature. You know, so be grateful and count your blessings for how far you've come and, and what you have. Because what you have is priceless. It's knowledge. It's, 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 it's no longer captivity and being captivated by the, the, the imagery of the beast in the world. That's, a, that's, a, that's worth so much more to the Lord, you know? It's worth so much to the Lord. So, guys, I'm going to leave you with that and, and, you know, the tale, leaving you guys with the tale of, of a T.I. And, and I'm going to just, you know, bring it back, you know? When the Lord inspires me to, to comfort you guys and to encourage you guys, that's... That's my gift is to be and you know to be to exhort you guys as a, as a as a life coach as an existing life coach to the things of the Holy Spirit in my life. So guys, just remain with the Lord, remain with Him, and you have to choose it for yourself. You can't don't sit around and wait. It's not we're no longer in that time frame. You know where we've moved on to a, to an age that is is even more so apparent in, in, in having to, you know, give glory to our Lord, you know. If you can't see it by now, I, I really don't know what to tell you. You know, if you can't see it by now, uh, let's hope you're not left behind in the matter of what you know you need to do, you know. So, all right, guys, till the next one, go to the existential way, and Godspeed, guys.